In this episode, I'll be talking about structure. What is structure? How does it work? And how do you show structure in your drawings? The next few episodes after this will be about applying structure to the human figure. Just like gesture had the three basic lines, C, S, and I, structure also has its three basic building blocks, spheres, cylinders, and cubes. You can simplify pretty much any organic object into these three forms or a combination of these three forms. You can also stretch and bend these forms to better fit the character of the subject. A sphere can be modified to an egg shape, a cylinder can taper thinner to one end like you'd see in a leg. At its extreme, a tapering cylinder would become a cone. A cube can be stretched to be more rectangular. And the sides don't have to be the same size. You can taper thinner to one end like with the cylinder, bend it to follow the gesture of the pose, and even twist it. Basically, think of these forms as if they're made of Play-Doh. You can deform them as you wish. We construct from these basic building blocks because it's a lot easier to imagine simple forms three-dimensionally than complex forms. It's a lot easier to imagine and work out the perspective of this camel with boxes and cylinders. Then add the details of the anatomy. The same could be done with the figure, which I'll go over in detail in the next few episodes. Simplify the figure into basic spheres, cylinders, and boxes. This will immediately give the figure a three-dimensional look. Having established this idea allows you to visualize and construct the finer details of the anatomy in perspective more accurately. The difference of spheres, cylinders, and cubes. So let's take a closer look at these simple forms. You can simplify the rib cage and pelvis to spheres, cylinders, or boxes or combination of these forms depending on what you need for that pose. The sphere is really just a circle, since a sphere without tone appears two-dimensional. So the sphere is flat when using line. It doesn't tell us anything about the form and its orientation in space. If you stretch the circle into an oval, now we have one piece of information about its orientation. The oval will only tell us the tilting left or right. To show any kind of leaning back or forward, we need to indicate a bottom plane or a top plane. That's where the cylinder becomes useful. It shows the tilting with the angle and the leaning with the bottom or top planes. We can go one more step forward and use a box. The box has one thing that the cylinder doesn't. It shows us the edges between front, back, and side planes. This shows us the twisting motion. So now with these three options, we can choose the one that does the best job in describing the form of the pose we're drawing. Sometimes a cylinder for the ribcage with a center line to show the twist is enough. Sometimes the addition of the corners of the ribcage and pelvis to show the front and side planes is helpful. It's up to you to decide how you use these basic forms. Drawing cylinders. Start constructing cylinders by finding the angle, the length, and width. This establishes its placement and size. If the cylinder is foreshortened, make sure to slightly taper the sides thinner towards the far end to indicate foreshortening. Then it's time to identify the cross contours. Ask yourself if you're looking up or down at the cylinder and how much. Based on that, add the ellipses of the top and bottom planes. Make sure to keep the angle of the ellipse perpendicular to the angle of the sides. The common mistake is to make the angle vertical or horizontal. For example, the wheels on a car won't be vertical like this. Instead, they will be perpendicular to the angle of the axle. Another common mistake is when we indicate the cross contour lines, we tend to make them flatter than they really are. The thing about cross contour lines is that most of their effect is on the sides. That's where the roundness of the form is revealed. So don't flatten them and bring them to a sharp corner with the edge of the cylinder. 
that defeats the purpose of the cross contour lines. It should feel like it's wrapping around the edges. Drawing boxes. You should be able to draw a 3D box from your imagination at any angle. In the Illusion of Depth series, I talked a little about perspective. A box's edges will converge to a vanishing point on the horizon line. This works well for structures like a house where the bottom plane is parallel with the ground. When you rotate the boxes, it gets much more complex, and personally, I feel it's too complex and too mathematical to think about all this stuff when you're drawing a figure. So develop your sense for perspective and use your intuition. You'll get better with practice, but a few tips should get you pretty far right away. The way I approach it is at first I imagine which planes of the box I'm seeing. You'll see one, two, or three planes. If you're looking directly at one side, like the front, it's just a rectangle. When the box rotates down, you start seeing the top plane. And when it rotates to one side, you'll see one of the side planes. Also, notice that all the lines are converging to create the sense of depth. Look at this box and see if you draw boxes this way. If you draw boxes this way, stop. This is an impossible box. Things appear smaller as they move away from us. So drawing all these parallel lines removes perspective from the scene. And if this plane is a rectangle, that indicates we're looking directly at it. If we were looking directly at it, none of the other planes would be visible. In this case, since we're seeing some of the right side, the front plane is starting to rotate away from us. The lines here would converge to the left. And since we're seeing the top plane, the front and side planes are rotating downward, so the lines would converge down. Now that's a much more three-dimensional box. Let's try a step-by-step -step approach and see if this helps you. I'll start with the inside edges of the box. The most vertical one is a good starting point. Is the box leaning to the left or right, and how much? Establish that with the first line. Then, are you seeing the bottom or top of the box? If you see the top, then the other two inside edges will be attached to the top of the initial line. How much of the top are we seeing? If it's a little, the lines will be flatter with an obtuse angle. A lot, and they will have more of an acute angle. Also, at this point, you're thinking about how much of the front and right side you're seeing. The same of each would make the angles of these lines equal. If you see more of the front, that side will be more horizontal and the other side more vertical since it's moving away from us more, and vice versa. This is the foundation. It tells you the orientation of the box. After this, it's really easy. Just go to the end of each line and connect the outside edges with converging lines. Consider the lengths of the initial three lines. If it's a perfect box, then you just need to think about how much each side is being foreshortened depending on how much it's facing away from you. But if some sides are longer than others, think about that length and foreshortening. As you can probably tell, this isn't something you'll get right on your first try. It's a bit confusing, so you need to repeat the process many times to get familiar with it. It's critical that you do get familiar with it if you want to apply these concepts to a complex form like the figure. Next week, we talk about the Robo Bean, which is a 3D representation of the torso. So go practice your boxes by looking around you for boxy furniture and drawing them from different angles. Then try inventing them from your mind. Assignments. Start by practicing cylinders and boxes of the things around you. Here, you're using observation and what you know about structure to draw the forms. Then move on to drawing them from your imagination. Can you imagine a box in your mind and then draw it exactly how you imagined it? When you're ready, get some reference of animals and try to simplify them into balls, cylinders, and boxes. Avoid flat angles. Try to find dynamic angles of the animals in motion. That will be a much more valuable exercise. Student critiques. In the premium section, I'm posting critique videos of student work. That's where you come in. So do the assignment from this week's lesson, post your drawings on your Facebook page, Tumblr, blog, forum, wherever you like to post your artwork. 
In your post, make sure to mention this video and include a link to it. Email me and tell me where I can find your drawings. Make sure to follow the guidelines that I describe on proco.com slash critiques. Everyone that participates will be able to download that critique video. If you want to see a more detailed explanation of this video and all the other, <clears throat> if you want to see a more detailed explanation of this video and every other video from the Figure Fundamentals series, check out proco.com slash figure. For every free video that I post during this figure series, I have additional premium content on proco.com. This week, I explain more about the position of the viewer, avoiding flat perspective, and how to simplify forms. There's over three and a half hours of video in the premium section, so lots of goodies there. Proco.com slash figure. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, share the wealth. Tell your friends. Post it on your favorite social network. And click this button here to subscribe to the Proco newsletter if you want to be updated about new videos. Bye-bye.